and welcome back to my channel, Divinely Guided Tarot. If you're new here, my name is Angel, and I'm here to bring you another general collective energy reading. This message could be for all signs, so please remember to take only what message that resonates with your particular situation. Leave the rest behind. And as always, guys, thank you so very much for everything that you do to help this channel grow. It is greatly appreciated. I'm really glad that you're here today. Um, I chose to pull this energy first thing in the morning before I actually start my day at work. And I wanted to give you that fresh start kind of vibe. So that's what I'm kind of going for here right now is to channel that message for the people that need the message this morning or in the morning or first thing in the morning. If that's that type of personality, if you're that kind of morning person where you're like, man, I could really use a cup of God before I use a cup of coffee, like that's going to be the person that resonates with this message today. I just have a feeling. So before we get started, let's go ahead and call in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, please come through. Please shield Guard, protect this portal while I channel divinely guided messages for my beautiful subscribers. Please help me with the messages that they need to hear at this divine right time. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, guys, let's take a peek. Let's see what we have first thing in the morning. What does God have on the plate for you today? What does God have on the plate for you this week? What is it that God's trying to prepare you for first thing in your day as soon as you wake up? right? Because I feel like some people struggle to fall asleep. Some people struggle when they first wake up. I don't know if you knew that or not, but a, the majority of people, the those people just struggle getting to sleep because they're too anxious and they've got like that knot in their chest and they've got too much on their mind. Maybe they're expecting things and things aren't coming, but listen, it's coming. <laughs> don't worry. Um, some actually have the opposite effect. They can go to sleep just fine because they drive themselves to exhaustion. But upon wakening, who buddy, that's like a whole different ball game. Some people wake up nauseated. Do you know how miserable a life that that is? To wake up and be sick and nauseated, like morning sickness all the time? And it's because of anxiety? Because somewhere deep down inside, you know your spirit didn't rest fully that night before. That you're not getting true rest. You're just driving yourself to exhaustion so you could escape whatever it is that's going on. Maybe it's just what others perceive as bad luck. And you, you're just, you're just surviving. You know? I feel like somebody needs this message when they wake up in the morning. So... They need God's words first thing in the morning. My angels are telling me it may be a good idea for those individuals, before we even get started, it may be a good idea to um, keep a journal, try to jot down the first thought that comes into your head when, when you wake up, like dream journal, but it's not really a dream journal. You're just trying to capture your most raw thoughts first thing in the morning. Somebody would also benefit from having their Bible on their nightstand, not just as a protection near where you lay your head at night, but um, to actually pick up that Bible and just kind of like Bible roulette it and just flip through the pages, stop on a page, point and read. And that's generally going to be a message that is going to be perfect for you every single day. Try that out. Those are really good um, practices. And I love how, like, the Christian community is like, oh, card reading bad, card reading. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I can, I can understand that. But what about your Bible roulette? Aren't you doing the exact same thing? Like, come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> So, um, God can deliver a message any way he chooses. I mean, God can talk to a homeless person in a bowl of soup. Did you know that? People can find God in a hot meal that was given to them by a godly person. God will move on this planet and he will deliver the message no matter what kind of tricks the enemy tries to play with you. Okay? So, we pulled these out first. 
gonna go ahead and figure out what's going on. Okay, listen up. We've got the community, we've got the child, and we've also got sudden wealth, okay? So I feel like we may be coming across the celebration. Maybe a child is being born into a community that is, oh, okay. Okay, so we've got some special babies being born into the world. Like this, the end of this summer, like September, October, 2024, September, October, 2024, like the start of school season, there's going to be a great many white lambs that are going to be entering into the physical plane that we're on, the, the earthly plane, meaning that God is delivering chosen children that are going to be doing greater things than even we as the chosen in this century are doing. We're getting ready to raise the next generation of chosen elite. Um, this is huge. The whole community is celebrating at this point. Okay? The whole community is celebrating a child being born. This could be an entire family unit that is celebrating a child being born. Maybe... Um, this person that is going to resonate with this was considered to be barren or not able to have children or they found it very difficult to get pregnant. Maybe they've tried in vitro. Maybe they've tried this. Maybe they've tried this. Maybe these, this couple that I am actually pulling in right now has tried everything to get pregnant and it hasn't worked. But as soon as they turn to God, bingo, bango, bongo. We got a baby bump, okay? So somebody has, somebody is preparing to give birth to a chosen child. And this child is loved already. These children are so loved and so raised, raised on high in their family. Let me tell you something about these children, okay? I don't even need this. We're just going to have a conversation, okay? Because that's what... That's better for me. It's easier for me to flow with this energy and tell you what I'm feeling instead of trying to prove it with cards every time. You want to have some proof? Go ahead and look at the 600 videos before this. So let's just get down to the nitty gritty like I do on my members' channels. So we just have some serious one-on-one -on -one talks here, okay? So I'm going to get real with you. A couple of different things happening right now. There is a trove of children that are being born that are going to be um, highly, highly protected children. These are children that are going to be raised in love, reared in a strong faith with God. They could be a part of a church. They could be um, planning to join a church, a big church. Um, no matter what this is, in the spiritual community, somewhere along those lines, this individual is going to be prophesying about Jesus, okay? This child is going to know things that are going to scare a lot of people whenever they hear it. Um, these children, when they are born, they are going to be able to lift themselves up in strength. They're going to be so strong as three-day-old infants that they're going to be able to push themselves up like they're trying to lift their bodies up and lift their head to see what's going on. And you're going to be like, how is this possible? How is this possible? There's no way this baby could do that. These babies are going to be born knowing how to speak the language that you speak. You're going to hear infants before they even have teeth, saying, I love you. Okay, we're going to see some crazy, insane things. And when these children come on this planet, you're going to know who they are. It's going to be undeniable. They're going to have so many markers on them that are going to target them as a godly gift to the planet. So it's going to feel like you just hit the jackpot, baby. You have a chosen child. I feel like the seed of the 144, you know, because if you resonate as one of the 144,000, 
God's chosen, right? And it's not the end times just yet for those chosen, the 144. That legacy will pass down to your heir, to your child, to your firstborn. Your firstborn will carry that legacy that you carried. You pass on the legacy of the 144 to that seed, okay? You grow and you pass that genetic on. These children, I mean, I don't want people to say, like, you're not part of the 144. You very well could be. But it's not God's time yet to call those 144. So your child is going to hold that mantle. But I, I'm going to tell you something important. Those children that are going to be born right now, this year, predominantly in the month of September and October, let me tell you something. These children are going to know they're, they're the 144,000. They're going to remain pure their entire lives. And God is going to be so deeply rooted in them that they will not, they will not fail. They will not fail. They need you though. These children are going to need the anointed parent. You were chosen to be a parent for this child. You were chosen to give birth to a chosen child. Blessed is the womb that carries the seed of destiny. Hoo hoo hoo, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting real prophetic speech coming through. And when I speak prophecy over you, I'm speaking prophecy over you. This will happen. This is happening. If you are pregnant right now, and maybe... You know, you had a hard life, but you came out of this darkness and you are ready to raise a child in so much love. Helping them fulfill their missions. You're going to be teaching them about Jesus. And then when this child turns 11, this child is going to be teaching you about Jesus. No joke. We're going to have a sleuth of 10 year old kids that are going to be acting like they're 30. Okay. They're going to be born or older. They're not going to fall victim to the same kind of childish tendencies that most children fall victim to, because let's face it, children are children. We're learning. They're learning. It takes time for them to learn how to those morals and to grow with that. These children are going to be born aware. These children are going to be born and know how to speak. Okay, like I said, these children are going to teach you. I feel like your biggest problem in the future is going to be feeling the way Mary felt with Jesus sometimes. Like, do you ever feel just inadequate? Because you know this child is so much greater than you. And then you get that, that love for your child. And that overrides everything. But you're just going to be in awe all the time. Because the very child that you're growing in your belly right now, right now, or whenever you see it, when you had that child in your belly, you felt it. You knew like, how can I be the mother of this great being inside of me? How is this possible? You're going to feel closer to Jesus's mother. You're going to feel close to Mary than you ever have in your entire life. And they're playing um, that song. Amy Grant sings it. And it's a big time Christmas song. It's Mary Did You Know. Oh, love that song. Love that song. It's really coming through strong right now. And um, I feel like maybe that might be a perfect song for you to really connect to you and baby. Huh? Sing it. See what happens. Play it on your belly. Play it in the room. See what happens. So let's go ahead and talk about this a little bit more because I did say that there were two sides of the story. All right, guys. So we know in the spiritual community, we are all about balance, <laughs> right? We're all about balance. This guy didn't disappear completely. The trickster has come out again. Yes, the devil has too also anointed his version of divine children, okay? Demonic children are going to be brought into this planet. Now, 
I struggle with this a little bit because to me, all children are blessings. All children are innocent, but there's going to be something wrong with these children. They're going to be born with deformities. The children of darkness are going to be born out of deformities. They're going to have like missing limbs or cleft chins or like they're going to have problems. They're going to have like missing organs. Like how does a baby miss an organ, you know? The parents are going to be straight evil, praying for an evil child, basically. I'm, I'm going to let you know right now that these children, if they survive, because I don't see many of them surviving, um, it's, I can't see evil creating something that, that would ever survive this planet. That's why they all come out deformed or warped in some way, shape, or form. It's like the devil wants to have a warped child that looks pretty on the outside, that they can corrupt from the inside, aka the Antichrist. You know what I mean? So, um, what I'm seeing is, is those children will struggle, but there are going, there, there's, it's got to be balanced, okay? These anointed children are coming into the planet. There's going to be a balance of equally evil people intending to bring evil children into the planet. Now, every human being is blessed with a choice, okay? If a woman is raped by a demon and a hybrid demon baby comes into this planet, okay, I believe that child still has a choice to make when they become of age, but most of them will not survive that. Most of them will be corrupted by their parents long before it, and they'll be making decisions to be evil for the rest of their life. So they're kind of born and doomed at birth, but there's always a chance. And I always kind of pray that God spares those children and just blesses them with somebody that can teach them about Jesus before it's too late. You know, because... Even Drizella, <laughs> Cinderella's evil stepsister, could apparently be forgiven and come around and be anointed and live happily ever after, too. You know, if evil can turn around and come back from that, that's, that's not bad. I mean, God will always use somebody's evil for somebody else's good. You know, I mean, nothing will ever harm the chosen. But that's a side kind of bucket it has nothing to do with you it will have nothing to do with your children it's just a sad knowing that washed over me that that balance does have to come out this child though the one that is growing within you is very much very much in love with you they love you already oh they holy cow who's having twins and i'm sorry i sometimes say that because i have twins and it was a very lonely road for me. I, they were born <laughs> and I was a single parent. You know what I mean? Like from day one, it was just the three of us. And I sometimes have a hard time separating that. But for you, some of you are pregnant with twins or just finding out that you're being pregnant. Some of you are going to find out you're, you're pregnant in September or October. Get out of town. That is so cool. So what's happening in September and October, I wonder, that's kind of kickstarting this <gasps> Stop it. Right before the election in the United States. Stop it. Okay. All right. I feel like there's like a game on kind of vibe happening right now. Like it's game on. Like, the anointed, like, it's almost like God flipped a switch and he's like, yeah, we're having enough of this. Chosen children, it's time. You need to get down there before it's too late, before somebody does something stupid and hires a criminal to run our country. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, I feel like this may be kickstarting something big. Ooh, I don't want to dive into that bucket because that's a prophecy bucket that I do not have permission to dive into right now. Sometimes I'm given permission to look inside and share my viewpoints or what God is putting on my heart, but that's like a no-no. I don't touch that, so not right now anyways. So I want some kind of final outcomes for you. Um, 
a little bit of advice, God, Holy Spirit. Um, <laughs> he says, um, cut out your cussing and your swearing, okay? First things first, chosen children do not need to have a parent that still curses and says the F word or the S word or anything that is derogatory in any way, shape, or form. So I feel like you're getting ready to clean up your language, or I feel like you are cleaning up your language for the sake of the baby, which is true, but God wants you to clean up your language for the sake of humanity. He says, you don't need to be cursing anymore. He says, put an end to some habits, start balancing out your life a little bit differently, and start preparing, get your nesting going on, okay? Talk to the baby, lay down the ground rules before they even come out. Trust me, everything that you're saying to that child right now in your stomach from the moment of conception all the way to the day that they crown, trust me, they understand you, they hear you, and they're already drawing up and drafting up plans inside of you right now as you speak. God has prepared them. They're not just sitting in there discovering that they have fingers and scratching their behinds, you know, like you can see on some um, um, ultrasound pictures and stuff. I feel like some of you have ultrasound pictures of a child sucking on their thumb. That's beautiful. I love that. I think that's so comforting, so sweet, so innocent, so natural, you know. And um, this is going to be a whole new experience for you. You are going to... Um, have some hiccups the first year. You're going to have some hiccups the second year. And then by year three, things are going to start feeling a little bit more abnormal, I guess I should say. It's going to feel different. When your child begins to really put sentences together for the first time, you're going to be wondering why... Is every other child goo goo gaga blah 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 and yours is saying mommy please pass the orange juice you know or, mommy please pass my bottle can I have my formula you know what I mean like how crazy how crazy is that but it will feel abnormal so you are gonna have to protect this child from the other children and I feel like we kind of do that right now anyways. Like when you have a sensitive child, like I have a sensitive child and I have a strong child and it's like they, they help each other. They try to compensate for each other, but what happens when they're on their own and they're split up and they're in different classrooms, you know, the weaker one who's not really weak at all. He's just sensitive and seen as different. Um, he's teased. He's, he's picked on, you know, I feel like we, we try to protect our children from other children anyways. Bullying is a, is a real deal. It's a real thing that carries on into your adult life. I'm sorry, adult bullies are way worse than child bullies will ever be. No, I don't think anybody on this planet can disagree with that. Adult bullies are the worst. So help your child conquer the child bullies in front of them, the, the Goliaths in front of them. And then they'll be able to handle the Goliaths later in life. So don't treat your child as different. Say, God bless you with a special ability. But never believe that you are powerful. Always remember that it's God in you that is making you powerful. Rear them in that way and you will not fail. Um, because it's going to be different raising this child. It's not going to be like raising every other child. You can't play mind games with this children in reverse psychology, this child. You can't manipulate them. They're going to find clever and unique ways to outwit you. They're born kings, royal, already. I see a lot of male babies, but I see only a handful of female babies. So whoever this is resonating with, the majority of you are coming through saying, I'm having a little boy. I'm having a little boy. I'm naming him Michael. I'm naming him Raphael. I feel like cherubim angels and seraphim angels, like their names are being christened over like these children. Like you're reaching out, reaching out for angelic names to name your child after. That's not, uh, that's something to, to, to use as confirmation for you, I guess. If the name you've been thinking about for your child is the name of an archangel, a seraphim angel, or a cherubim angel, 
then this message may be for you. Maybe you're being called to name them after a great angelic presence because that's going to be the guardian angel that watches over that one particular 144. Did you ever think of that? I mean, it could be anything, you guys. But these children are going to be born kings and queens, royal from birth. Um, they're going to demand a certain amount of attention from you. They're going to demand adult responses and adult reactions. You can't treat this child like a child. You have to treat this child like an adult. That's why this is going to be a little bit tricky for you, okay? It's abnormal. Have you ever met like a, um, a kid in school who had one, like a, a set of family, but they only had like one kid to like the entire family? Like all of the aunts and uncles never had children and like your parents take you to adult parties and you're the only kid there. You grew up talking to more adults and having more adult conversations because there were no other children around. So that may be the environment that you're going to be raising them in. So there's a little bit of advice here. Don't treat this child like a child. Treat this child like a like a growing youngster in middle school, you know? One that can reason, one that can understand because this child can reason and can understand. If you treat this child like this child is like every other child on the planet, where they're a little bit slower with their cognitive skills growing up, and you won't be able to have real conversations with them until they, they, they grow some teeth in their mouth. Guys, it's going to be completely different. Don't make that child wait three years before you actually start talking to them. Because then they can get lost. You know, and it might be harder for them in their life. So if you're worried about parenting, don't. This child is going to be greater than you anyway. So you might as well just admit that right now. And say, God, please... Prepare me to be the divine mother for this child. Help me to raise this child the way Mary raised you. You know, these are beautiful prayers. And these are prayers that you can say right now. Look at that. Justice coming in. 11 right there on the dot. Um, you could be seeing 11, 11 a lot. But we have 11 here. We have 11 here. I felt like the age 11 was important to mention earlier. Like at the age of 11, they're going to be teaching you things about Jesus that you never knew. Like they're going to start testing and stretching their prophetic skills. Um, and with justice coming out here, matching the 144 chosen collective, I feel like it's, it's their destiny. And if you feel like you have one of these anointed children, one of these blessed children, um, I just want to say good luck to you and just to... Constantly follow the voice of God. Follow where the Holy Spirit is nudging you to go. And what the Holy Spirit is nudging you to do, you will not go wrong. Don't buy 15,000 books to teach you how to parent and how to parent the right way and when to take the pacifier away. Believe me, this child is going to be a week old and sitting up and you're going to be like scared to death. You're going to be like, holy cow, I'm not ready for any of this. I guess we don't need the, bum the bumbo seat or... I guess we don't need these exercise floor mats because you're already crawling. You're, you don't need to push yourself up and look at something on the, above your head, you know? Like, you're going to need a better solution than a crib <laughs> at this point. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's going to be different. This child will break all the rules. And it's going to be beautiful it's going to be glorious, and it's going to be brand new. This whole community is going to raise this child. This child's going to be raised with a godly spoon in his mouth or her mouth. But I feel like it's time. It's time for them. It really is. And it's weird. It's weird to, to say it's like, I know I'm in these end times that the Bible talks about. I know God's going to take me alive. You know, I, I know this. And it's, it still baffles me. It's still awe-inspiring. But that gives me a lot of hope that we still have a good amount of time left here. And that things are going to seem to be okay even as the world goes through its climate changes and the world is starting to pass away and we're going through all these birthing pains, I feel like God may be blessing us with a little bit more time 
Maybe God's giving us more time in this season. So don't worry about having a child during dangerous times like this and the uncertainty of it. God will not allow anything to happen to this child or this child's mother. Okay? And for some of you, I do feel that maybe you don't have a husband with you or maybe you're pregnant and it just didn't work out with the dad. This child is still going to be loved. I'm, I'm not... I'm not messing around. It's going to be a 10 cup kind of life. You're going to be the type of person that ends up co-parenting with the child's father, like, like a boss, you know, and it's going to be amazing. But for many of you, you have a spouse, you have a boyfriend, you're having this child with somebody that you love. You're both scared. It's okay. But this is a family card. This is divine love coming through in all of its true forms. This is the outcome. This is going to be a whole new world for you. And I want you to see something. You see how small those children are dancing and playing in the background? I feel like those little children may only be old enough to maybe just wobble around in the yard and they're dancing. I feel like you have special children getting ready to come into the world. And I am really excited to see how this works out for you. I'm really excited to see what messages God puts on your heart during this time. Because, I mean, as a, a pregnant woman, you've got to be feeling everything right now. You've got to be feeling like, I got to get this ready. I got to get this ready. I, I got to get this. I got to go to this doctor appointment. I got to figure out how I'm going to pay for the hospital bill. And blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? It's just like, there's so much to do. And then what advice do you listen to? And what advice do you listen to from the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit says they're going to step in. And the Holy Spirit will tell you exactly what you need to know. And there is a woman right now who's struggling with um, nightmares during her pregnancy. Where she's having these nightmares like that their baby is turning inside out. Like, you're feeding a baby, and then the baby turns inside out before your eyes, and, like, the baby's not acting like anything's wrong, but you're seeing, like, they look like they're turned inside out, and it's freaking, it's freaking this woman out. I, let me tell you something, guys. Nightmares are normal <laughs> when you're pregnant, and especially if you're carrying twins. Those hormone levels are all off the charts, you guys, so don't beat yourself up for having nightmares. It's actually normal. It's normal. <laughs> Any any pregnant, any woman, any mother will tell you. It's normal. Um, try not to feed into those nightmares. But it's causing a lot of anxiety. It's causing a lot of, uh, you know what I mean? So maybe you're waking up nauseated. Maybe you're waking up with actual morning sickness, okay? Um, wow. Wow. That might explain it. You're exhausted, you crash, you fall asleep, and then you wake up and you're so sick and you've got all of this anxiety. No wonder you're you're waking up nauseated and anxious. You don't need a sleep journal. You need a Tums and a glass of milk or some flat Coke, <laughs> flat warm Coke or a soda cracker or something on your bedside table. Oh, sweetheart, I wish I would have known this sooner. I could have told you that. You don't need that dream journal after all. <laughs> it's okay. Um, but don't let the, the baby blues kind of stuff get you down. Pre-baby blues and baby blues, they, they can happen. They can creep up on you. Um, just let God lead you during this time. Try to not worry about anything. Prepare for the basics. Does the baby have food? Does the baby have clean clothing? Does the baby have diapers? Does the baby have a place to sleep and rest? Is the baby safe? And then you can worry about, is baby happy? Is baby learning things? Don't worry about anything else except for those five things. Is baby fed? Is baby clothed and clean? Is baby protected with a bed? Does that baby have a place to sleep? Is that baby safe? You know? Remember all of those things. Those are the staples. Those are the basics. Those are the only things that God wants you to worry about right now is preparing that baby for those things. And, oh, the fifth one, does that baby have diapers? <laughs> you know what I mean? 
So only care about those five things right now. If you can handle just those five things, God will take care of the rest of the list that you have. And believe me, I'm seeing a scroll that is just winding down and your angels are rolling their eyes going, really? We need this? And listen, it's the things that are in your mind saying, I need this, I need this, I need this, I need this because I can't have a kid if I don't have a warmer for the baby wipes that I use on my baby because God forbid baby has a cold, wet towelette on his bum. You don't need a baby warmer. Put that towel in your hand and close your hand over it and it warms it. And then you open up your hand and there's a clean baby wipe that's pre-warmed and you can wipe your baby's tushy, you know? So don't worry about that stuff. You don't need no diaper genie. Guess what? You ain't going to buy the refills for the diaper genie and you're going to end up using your kitchen trash every time. And I know all the moms are laughing right now because everybody got those stupid diaper genies and you're like... It stinks in my baby's room and it's, it's just, it's not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, it's not doing anything. Just take it out with the trash like normal, like a normal person. You know, a bag of Cheerios, a little baggie of plain Cheerios was like my kid's staple snack for years. I didn't have to buy anything super, super fancy or special. I would buy them fancy special like puffs or, you know, tasty stuff that's manufactured that costs like $50 a month to buy. And my kids are like, I want Cheerios. I want Cheerios. I want Cheerios. You have dry cereal all you want, baby. You know, don't worry about the simple things. Let God handle that stuff. You handle the five staples, your five responsibilities with this baby. That's it your stress level will start to go down and it'll be safer for you and baby. And then you'll be able to relax and have a better pregnancy and finish to your pregnancy, okay? So, it says all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Second Timothy chapter three, verse 16. Do you remember how we were talking about you can keep a Bible on your bedside table and play Bible roulette? You know, especially if you're waking up nauseated and you're waking up struggling. I still say that's a good deal to do. And this is the scripture that's backing that up and supporting that. That no matter what scripture you find in that Bible, if you keep it on your bedside table and you pull it out and you play that Bible roulette, there will be a message in there for you. God wants you to start reaching to him for your messages and your confirmations. He's saying, I have every sign pointed directly at you, but half the time the people that are sleeping and don't realize God's communicating with them, they can't see those signs and it blows right past them. Do you ever see like those, those memes where this woman is crying and she's like, God, why, why can't you send me a nice man who will treat me well and make an honest woman of me and blah, blah, blah. And God's like, I did send you a guy and then you told him he was too short for you and you broke up with them. I mean, those funny ones. It's like God's talking to you all the time. How many signs do you need, kid? That's what he's saying. How many signs do you need? You have that conversation with God and I'll tell you what, every morning God's going to deliver you a new message. It's beautiful. It's <laughs> And it's supernatural. You like that supernatural stuff? God is the God of supernatural. I'm introducing you to a supernatural God. You go ahead and play that Bible roulette and watch him solve all of your deepest, darkest fears and secrets and problems. And, and you're going to be like, wow, it's been here the whole time. Yep. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> it says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. How many of you had resonated with that scripture in the past and are now realizing that that scripture is being spoken over your unborn child? Before you knew your child, God knew your child and set your future child apart as a prophet to the nations. These lambs, I'm, I'm, I can't make this up, you guys. These lambs are being born into the world right now. We are witnessing history in the making. 
the chosen elite, the chosen are coming in. These children will take the, the bread and the butter and the, and the word of God that we feed them and they are going to do insanely beautiful things for God's kingdom. And you're just going to sit back and you're going to probably be on a television channel one day going, they're going to be like, excuse me, ma'am, are you proud to be the child, to be the mother of a child that does such great things and healings and people everywhere and brought these people closer to God? Are you proud of your son or daughter? Ma'am, you're like, I'm so proud. I've never been prouder in my entire, I'm seeing an ex like a proud mother. I mean, you could be at the Olympics right now saying that's my baby who just won gold. I mean, I feel like that's how happy you are going to feel. You're going to feel like a proud mom. You're already a proud mom. You're going to be a proud dad. You're already feeling proud. This is, this is an anointing. You were anointed. We knew that already. We knew you were chosen. But now that your children are coming in, it passes down to them. That crown passes to them. These children are special. This is not normal. Be patient with these children. You're actually going to have a better time raising them because they're going to understand and be able to reason at a very early age. So um, teach them really good morals, guys. And you, I'm going to go out on a limb here. And I'm just going to say it. These children don't know how to lie. These, these children will be incapable of telling a lie. They're showing me the movie Liar, Liar with Jim Carrey. But these children are going to be naturally attuned to tell the truth. Liberty, justice, um, righteousness. Yeah, they, the, yeah, these, I'm going to, I'm going to be confident and say that angels. These children will be incapable of telling a lie. And the truth that they speak will echo across chasms. It will reach people that are unreachable. I'm, I'm going to stop there though because I don't want to dive too deep into that. It's, it's not time for that yet. I'm just kind of giving you a taste of what this child is going to be capable of doing. You have abilities. You and I both know that. Imagine what your child is going to be able to do. How powerful God works through you, imagine it times 10 with this child. Oh, buddy. It says, when I'm trying to please God, he makes even my worst enemies to be at peace with me. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 7. This closing scripture is a great scripture to remind you that even though you may be a little bit timid, a little bit scared going into this season, that you have nothing to worry about. God's going to protect you as well as that child. That child needs a guardian to carry them through to their destiny. God chose you to be a parent to this child. Do you understand that? God chose you to be a parent. Some of you are going to end up in relationships with men who are going to act as a steward the way... Joseph was a steward to Jesus's life because Jesus didn't have a father on the planet. God was his father. So maybe you'll find love and you'll find a stepfather for your child that will gladly raise an anointed chosen child. I mean, there's a lot of different things happening here. A lot of different romantic circumstances that led to this child coming into the world and like I said before, all children that come into the world are blessings. All children are innocent. All children are pure. Even hybrid demon babies, okay? They're just going to have a stronger struggle and they're still going to have that choice that all human beings are granted. So listen, I don't want you to worry anymore. Worrying is not good for your health or the baby. It just causes heartburn, trust me. So get your bottle of Tums. Get you some soda crackers, put a bottle of flat Coca-Cola on your nightside table, and I promise you the waking up nauseated and anxious all the time is going to pass. 
um, when this child is born or if you're just discovering that you're pregnant or if you're going to be discovering that you're pregnant in September or October of this year in 2024, just know that God's going to be with you the entire time. And all you have to do is just aim to please God in this moment. God, I want to do this pregnancy with grace. God, I want to deliver this baby without any damage to myself, without so much struggle. Please help me make this a beautiful experience that I can remember instead of a painful, difficult one. Please bless my baby with help. Oh, that's another thing. These children are not going to get sick, like at all. Like they may have allergies or like little snivels here and there. But you're going to hardly ever see this child sick. Maybe a common cold. Like maybe they may get a cold once or twice when they're young, young. But these children will not get sick. These children will be extremely healthy. Extremely. They're going to be super strong. Some of them are going to be powerful athletic figures, like they're going to be doing powerful athletic things. Some of these are going to have, um, some of these children that I'm seeing are going to have powerful lungs. So they're going to be able to do a lot of heavy sports like running, gymnastics. They may, and they may even try for the Olympics. They keep showing me the Olympics. I'm sorry. And I'm also seeing other children with strong lung capacity and vocal ranges and they're going to be like the next Celine Dion. They're going to be the next Freddie Mercury. They're going to, their voice is going to do something magical to the community. Um, so all of these children are going to be born with abnormal, abnormally unique talent, like genius level talent. Some children are going to be able to play every instrument like Prince did. He was able to play every instrument ever known to man and play it flawlessly. And it was just... A gift. He was a prodigy. Um, some of these children are going to be named as prodigies pretty early in life. Some kids are going to be so smart that they're going to be able to know every single language ever spoken. Dead languages up to languages spoken all over the world. And you're not going to know how this is possible. And they're going to have, what they have is a gift of tongues. They're not going to realize it, but people are going to call them a prodigy and, and incorrectly name that spiritual gift. It's called a gift of tongues, where you have the ability to speak the language to anybody in any way. <laughs> like, you know, angelic language, you like you can speak in an angelic tongue, even dead languages that you would have no way of knowing the Holy Spirit speaks through you. And that's what's going to happen to a great number of these children. So, <laughs> whew, I'm excited. I, I pray that these children are blessed more so than they were originally about to be blessed. God, please place a hedge of protection around their communities, their families, their mothers, their fathers. Please bless their parents with the gifts and the, and the, the, the compassion from the community. To be able to help raise these children in righteousness. To be able to give them everything that they need. Fate and destiny are calling you to this moment. And I'm just thankful that I'm here praying for you. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Sorry I was, I kind of switched off and I was speaking directly to the child. The child made the child stepped forward. The child's spirit stepped forward. I don't even know what this child looks like. One of the child's spirits stepped forward and I had to address it directly. So I apologize there if it sounded kind of funny. Um, this is... The, I, I just... Guys. Oh, I can't wait. You just tell them Auntie Ashley says hello or Auntie Angel says hello, okay? Go by either. I love it. And I love you guys. And I'm so grateful to be, have been given the opportunity to give you this message today. So, all right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and close this off. No matter where you are in the world, take care of yourselves. God bless you all.